Hey everybody, welcome to Working Horses with Jim. I'm Jim and I've spent the last 40 years farming and logging with draft horses. In this seven part series, I'm going to be covering some of the basic essentials of owning and caring for draft horses. I know there are many different ways of doing things. My goal is to just to show you what has worked well for me and what I wish I had known starting out. So each Friday we'll have a new segment of this series. But stay tuned for, on Mondays and Wednesdays for our normal videos about our everyday life of working with horses. Good morning everybody, this is Working Horses with Jim and I'm Jim. And today we're on our third video on this series that I'm doing on basic horse care and, and working horses. So today we're going to talk about harness parts. And it's a cold morning this morning. Uh, I know on last week's video I waited till Thursday to do the video. And, uh, but today is only Tuesday so I'm several days ahead of myself which is great. And because it's so cold, it's going to allow me to go back in when I get the taping done and do some editing in a nice warm house, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, a couple thoughts on last week's video. A couple of people have asked about, uh, they were having troubles getting these type of brush brushes that I'm using and such. So Brenda's going to tell you more about how we might be able to help you with that and a couple other things. Hi everybody. I just wanted to let you know we put a link in our Amazon store if you're interested. It's not exactly what we use but it's the same kind of um, curry comb and the um, saw type instrument that Jim uses. Um, so you can check that out. They're not very expensive but they do work really well. Also I wanted to let you know that um, our newsletter is still going out weekly. If you haven't signed up for that, you might want to consider it. Sometimes if something comes up that Jim talked about the week before, um, if somebody has a question or something, we will uh, address it in the newsletter. It's free. All you have to do is sign up. And we have um, a, link, a link in that to our um, merchandise and also to the Amazon store if you want to, you know, if it's easier for you to look things up that way. So it's in the description below how to sign up for the email is very easy and you get a free ebook about the horses if you do. Okay so this week all we're going to do is go over the different parts on a harness. Next week I will actually show you and teach you how to harness them and depending on how long that takes I might even show you how I hitch them up to an implement. My harnesses are what we call a D-ring harness. Um, I would say we're kind of uh, it's, it's a harness kind of located in the New England area. This is northern New York and I moved up here 30 years ago from southern Vermont and I don't, there's hardly anybody in this area that uses this type of harness. So in some ways this not, is not going to help you with your harness that you already have. But I do want to explain some of the huge advantages in my mind on a, with a D-ring harness in the next few weeks as I go about hitching them up. A lot of the parts on these harnesses are the same as on your harnesses if you have a like a western style harness or there's several of the kinds of harnesses but a lot of the parts are still the same. These parts are sometimes called different things for the exact same piece on your harness. I looked up a couple um, books this morning and on a computer to find out um, what other people call these parts so that um, we can kind of compare. Um, I do have a picture of the parts of a harness that are pretty close to what exactly the way what I call them. So we'll maybe once in a while put this picture in as I go throughout the process and so this picture will be um, in the video at a couple different places maybe so that if you wanted to um, go back and real quick get a reference you can use that picture that they put it in the description below too we might be able to do that the picture yep okay we there can we ask the girls about that we could possibly do that we need our technical people the, our daughters to do that for us quite often okay so let's start at the start of the at the front part of the harness we'll start with the collars so this is the collar underneath here. Let's go over to the other collars that are not on the horse. We decided to put use buck for, and we could show the harness a lot better when it's on the horse. 
hung up like this, it's so hard to explain the different parts. But the collar is right here up front. So this is the collar, the heavy leather collar that we have. My collars are all heavy duty pulling, pulling collars, or at least I think they all are. And uh, so with the collars, we also have what we call a sweat pad. The sweat pad just goes inside the collar. This is getting right there. Uh, goes inside the collar and it's replaceable. So as this part, which is the part that's actually against the horse's neck, as this wears out, you can easily re, you know, buy these and replace them and it makes the collar itself last a lot longer. It's also a little bit more cushiony than the collar. So we put these on and generally, and there again, I know this is a, uh, one of those things that different people think differently, but I like to put on a sweat pad that's three inches larger than the collar. Most people actually go two inches, but I do have a preference on having it three. And, and there's a reason for that, and I can talk about that later. So this, this is a collar, and of course I'm not going to explain how, it's, how we put it on the horse. I'm just going to go through and do the parts. So after you have the collar, you have the hames. The hames go in that groove on that collar. I am asked quite often, what is this ball up here for? And it's, it's just basically for de decorations. It's not, it's not necessary. So then you have your top hame strap, which is right here, goes across here. And then a lot of people will use a bottom hame strap, an actual strap. Myself, I have been using this type of ratchet fastener for years now and it works really good. It just drops in place like that and then boom, you're done. I really, really like that. I remember years ago at a horse pole and I, I can't remember exactly, but I must have had just a strap here instead of the actual fastener. These fasteners are very strong. My strap normally is too, but I, I, I'm not sure what happened, but anyways, the strap broke and the horse, it was Mac and Rocky at the time, Mac, just walked right out of that harness while I was hitched to a load. Um, fortunately, I was able to stop in time, so we didn't have a runaway, but uh, it was a bit of a mess, and I was so glad because all the other horse pullers who are generally so good in helping out, they all ran right over and quick helped me take care of that situation. So anyways, uh, I do love these ratchet fasteners a lot. They work really good. I'd like to say that it was frightening watching from a distance. <laughs> Well, Be because the harness came right off the horse. You were probably hitching even at the time too, weren't you? I don't think I was. Oh, okay. The kids were really little. Right. Um, it wasn't that common on me either, I must say. <laughs> okay, so let's continue. The main part of your harness is, is this strap right here. This is a tug. A lot of people will call a trace. This is what actually pulls whatever is behind the horse. This is the, this is the transmission, I guess you could say, of the horse. It's, it's, it transfers the power from the, from the shoulder to whatever you're pulling, pulling at the time. This has to be very strong, especially for what I do with my horses. I do a lot of logging, which is really extremely hard pulling. And of course, I go to horse pulls once in a while too. But uh, it's got to be very strong. So these are actually nylon interior if you, you probably can't see it but the the interior of that tug is nylon and then on the outside it's bio and it makes a really good tug the nylon is a strength the bio bio is just so nice because it doesn't if this was nylon it would be rough against the horse's body as it shifts around so the bio bio helps that what is bio bioplastic biothane plastic it's okay. a plastic material and what about this? This is just some of that. You can see actually what's underneath it. That's actually yeah. That's that's the nylon underneath there. These this harness is about oh, it's not extremely old, but it's probably we've had it ten ten years maybe. I don't even think it's been that long. So it's it's like anything else. They do wear out. Mm -hmm. Now this also back on the Hames. This is an attachment you can buy. And I have this because I'm very particular where I want my draft. The draft is this spot right here where it's pulling on the shoulders. This particular type of setup here, I can adjust this screw and put it different spots on here to adjust that 
draft just by a little bit on a lot of my other harnesses. I actually have um, washers in, in here to slide this up and down because it's not a tight fit like this is. I, I like that a lot. Okay, like so we'll stay at the very front of the harness and we'll just name parts for just a little bit. Um, and I can't really explain this. I'm not going to explain this now. I'm going to explain it more when we hitch up to the implement how these parts work and how how and why I like the D-ring harness. So this is what I call the pole strap. It comes from, so I should go back just a little bit. This is the D of the D-ring harness. You see, if you look at it upside down, you got a D. Yeah. And so this pole strap hitches to the D, the front part of the D. Okay. It goes to the hook that hitches to the neck yoke. And now with a D-ring harness, you have a three-piece neck yoke. So this is one of four hooks. You got one here and you got one over there. And then you have this short strap here, and all I do is call this a lazy strap. It's just, it's, and I'll explain this more when I hitch the horses up in another video. So if we come back here, we have the back pad. This is a pretty heavy duty back pad, a kind of a fancy one. I really like this back pad. Um, it just, it's a fairly long one, so it comes down here quite a ways and it's fairly wide. It gives them a lot of support. And there again, I'm gonna to talk to more, you more about that in a future video when we hitch these horses up and explain, once again, the big advantage of a D-ring harness. So there's actually more names, if you wanna get precise, the back pad and then this short strap. Uh, oh, I can't remember, market strap or something like that. I've heard people call this, I think I'm right there, but it doesn't really matter. I just call the whole unit back pad. And then underneath you had your belly girth. And that's what hitches on the bottom side of the D-ring and on the other side the same way. The back pad, of course, hitches the top side of the D-ring. And then off the back of the D-ring, you have your long tug or trace. In the front part, you have a short tug or trace, and that hitches to the front, and this hitches to the back. But also, there's another little spot here that this strap hitches to. And it comes back to the ring on the britchin. This strap here, I call this my side strap. Just simple side strap because it's on the side of the harness. Uh, there again, I'm sure there's other names for that. So, the britchin itself is kind of a one unit thing. Um, and what holds this britchin from falling off are these straps here. And I should have checked to see what the official names of these straps are. To me, it's all included with the britchin. So these straps here come up to this small ring on the hames. And this keeps, this has to be adjusted properly to keep everything in place. I surely wish I had gone and I actually had troubles. I tried to find some of the official names for this. And so often I've used these harnesses for years and years and I don't have to say what the name is. And, but I do remember um, a lot of people used to have a, a back piece back here without the britchin and it, it was the spider. And I think this is still called the spider on a lot of harnesses, they would call this the spider. So on top of the spider here, spider, these two straps go to the hames. And then what I have, I guess you'd call just this wide strap here, the actual britchin that goes around his butt. Let's come over here, I can see it better. So that wide britchin goes around his butt to the other ring here. And this is all the same what we just talked about earlier. Now. These straps here that go up to the spider, which is what I'm calling now, actually just one of them goes up there. A lot of harnesses, you'll have two or even three go up there. You'll have a strap just like that, hitched right to here, and it goes straight and hitches onto that, the ring up there, this ring right here. You'd have two of them, and sometimes even three of them. On this particular britchin, which I like a, an awful lot, and there again, there's a specific name for it, but I don't really care, it doesn't matter. I guess I shouldn't say that because it might care to you guys. And the photograph I have that shows the different parts might say that on that. I'm not even sure. But come back here. How am I supposed to talk with you over there? Come here. Come here. Get your butt over here. Get over here. Thank you. Okay. So this type of britchin, and this is very important. As you can see, this strap here comes to the top ring. But this strap here goes from this big ring 
all the way around to the other ring. Now, if you think about this, I'm going to say this now because I might forget to explain it later. As they're holding back a load, which the britchin is for, to hold back a load, as they're holding back the whole load, they're holding it back from right here, but they're also holding it back from right here. Because as they're, as, because of this ring right here, you have two points right there. And this part is actually keeping their butt down while that is holding their, pushing their butt in place. I want to get this place. view right here. Back. Put it. So you'll just have to look it up unless I can find it here when I'm editing this film. The actual different names for these type of britches. But this is the britches that I really like. What you're really doing is telling people what the use of each piece is for. Basically, yes. Yeah. yeah. And, okay, one more thing, or two more things. Uh, three more things. Okay, when we're talking about the britches, this is just a strap that's hanging here. You're wondering that what this is. This is just goes to the, to the bridle for the check rein. I'll explain the bridles in a second. Um, while you're right up there, this is what we call a crouper. A lot of harnesses don't have this, and they don't, it's not crucial. They don't have to have a crouper. But the crouper is really nice. It just comes from this top ring and goes around his tail. <laughs> Abby says the crouper goes around the pooper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So the crouper just helps keep everything in place. It doesn't, you know, the whole britching can't slide back and forth quite so much if you have a crouper in place. So that's, that's I do like the crouper. One thing right here is a simple lazy strap for your tugs. So when you pull a tug out and you're, if you're using an evener on the ground and just pulling a log, for example, this keeps the tug from just flopping. Without this, this happens. So this keeps it up, and when this happens, the horse can just easily step over the tug if he turns or whatever. This kind of helps stop him from stepping over the tug, because even if this end of the tug falls down, they can't step over it. So there again, this is not crucial. When I'm using, for example, my logging cart, I don't even use the crouper a lot of times on my other no, harness. No, not crouper. I'm oh, sorry, the lazy strap. I actually call this the rear lazy strap because this is the front lazy strap. And so, um, you know, I don't even use it a lot of times because on my logging cart, my evener is really high and it just can't go anywhere. They can't get their foot over anyways. Oh, they're not too apt to. Um, so anyways, that's, that's what that's for. And if they get their foot in over that, that's when trouble happens. Oh, let me tell you a story. <laughs> uh, Years and years ago, I had a stallion that I would work. Um, I bought him as a yearling. And he, he, I trained him, oh, he was a good horse. His name was Rowdy. And his first mate was a horse named Bill. This was back in my early 20s. Um, he actually, I went on with him and actually bought another stallion and put the two stallions together when they were five years old and I worked those two for years. But anyways, that's a different story. But, but I remember when I first started working him in the woods with Bill, his first teammate, he had the terrible habit of kicking his foot for seemingly no reason at all. Usually it went the other way, over the tongue. But my tongue is really high on my logging car and he would kick his foot and every time them horses would run away, they minded really well, but, and I would take them out part way, and of course at the time I would not even hitch them because I think when we're younger, we tend to think, oh, nothing's gonna happen type of thing. As I get older, I actually hitch my horses way more than I did when I was younger. But anyways, he would kick his foot for some crazy reason, seemingly no reason at all, and his foot would go over the pole and go over his tug. So every time that happened, it was between his legs, of course, and he spooked and he ran. And I don't know how many times I had that happen to me before I smartened up and, and made sure I had him tied so he wouldn't do that. But anyways, you know, if they were to get over the tug, or even worse yet, over the pole, and you can just picture it, he's pretty good, I expect, so I can do this. And if he's, and if his tug or the, or the pole is between his legs, he does not like he it. He does not like right it. Now. 
And so it's something you obviously don't want to deal with. I'm going to put Buck back in the stalls. I've got one more thing to talk about. I know this video is already getting long. I thought this was going to be a very short one, but uh, I got one more thing to talk about. <clears throat> I'm sure I've forgotten a few things and maybe in the next video I will be reminded of them and I can talk a little bit more about what I've forgotten. But let's talk about bridles. Let's show this right here. Okay, here's two bridles right here. This is, this is Buck's bridle and this is Bill's bridle. So, it's Bill's? I'm sorry. This is Buck's bridle and this is Ken's bridle. And a bridle is just what goes over the head, of course, and that's how you can control them by the bit in, in their mouths. And I have, I use several different kinds of bits. It depends on the horse. Buck is a horse that is very aggressive, so I have this wire bit in here. Um, a lot of times I don't need that wire bit, but I have it there because at times he is quite aggressive. Ken is very unaggressive, so just a regular snaffle bit works great for him. Over here, this is Bill's, and I have a, a wire bit on him because he also is very aggressive. But on Lady, she is just the opposite at times, and right at the moment I'm running a rubber bit on her, which works good 90% of the time. There's times where um, she's doing a lot of logging, she might get a little aggressive, especially coming out. But I also, there's a lot of different bits out there. But I wanna, I wanna explain this particular bit. Now this is what, I actually grabbed a book that had, this is a catalog, all the different bits in it. And there's a few pages of different bits. So this bit, I'm not even sure what it is other than it's, it's either a Liverpool bit or a Buxton bit. Now, I have tried these bits several times on my horses and I just, I hate them. I just do not like these bits at all. There's something about them that I've never been able to master. Um, I, I feel that, I, I guess I'd have to say I feel that they're almost too aggressive of a bit, or they surely can be if you go down farther on this thing. But even if you're right here, because of this curb chain going against the bottom of his chin, you gotta be so careful that um, I, I don't feel that they pull very well when they're using this type of bit. But then again, it might be me in the way I drive, but uh, uh, I, I don't know, I just, they, I've never liked them. But this is actually what a lot of people use and I have no problem with people using it, but it's just not the bit for me. Okay, so can you explain that? This goes in the mouth. Yes. And that goes underneath, underneath the, chin, the chin. chin. Yes, and then you have these three spots, actually four spots, you can hit your line onto here or you can hitch it down. The further down you go, the more leverage you have. That's another thing they're called, a leverage bit. So you have more leverage down here, so as you're pulling, it's putting more pressure on underneath the chin, and it's just, it just more leverage so you can, you know, do more with them. But I just, I don't know, I just, I just have never, I've never liked them, but um, that's my opinion, so. That's what you use, great. How do you hook the um, the bridle to the harness? Are you gonna talk about that or is that uh, another video? I'm, that is on another video, but I did miss one thing. Get a, this here hanging here are the lines. And then at the end of the lines, yes, they are. And that goes into the bits. But that's for another video. Right, but just to show people, like right here on the... Right on there the on that big ring right there, yes. And then they, as you pull, you're putting pressure on their mouths. But I will explain that on a later video or attempt to. So we better call this video close enough because yeah. we've already, you've already talked too much. I know and we're almost out of juice on this camera, so we better go. It's surprising on this cold weather, the batteries go dead awful fast. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Any questions, please comment below. Um, and even questions of what to address on the next video as I show you how to harness. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna put that in one video or even hitch up in that same video, so. Let us know what kind of harness you guys use and how you like them. Yeah. Okay, have a great day.